now. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And here we are with Karen Newman. She's, uh, she's saved the day. Um, we were having some difficulties at the show with our live stream and connecting on Facebook. And so now um, we're all linked up and we're here together. And I know that I am very much looking forward to this time with Karen and uh, getting to know her better. And uh, for all of us to be present and, and uh, just bring in our flow forward, our energy. And we're going to open this up next week for feedback. But we just want to be in this now moment with each and every one of you. And so I don't want to belabor this because, Karen, they really know me. They've been hearing me talk an awful lot lately. And I would really love to introduce you. And OK, so just one moment. Alona, can you mute yourself? Every time you move, we get a big uh, thing. So up at the top, you can see the microphone. If you just click it, then it'll mute you. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so, well, what do you want to talk about? You asked me here. So. Oh, you're lovely. Well, you know what? And, I, and okay. it was so synchronistic and it was so wonderful yeah. how we how we met. And then we had an opportunity to chat and get to know one another. Yeah. And I certainly recognize some parallel similarities. Um, certainly a familiarity, let's say. A very fond familiarity um, that really activated my heart. And I felt a uh, such a lovely connection with you, your energy, your flow. And um, as we began to unwrap or unveil ourselves a little bit, for me, it became, um, you know, there was a theme, there was a theme emerging between yeah. us. And that was about service to others. Yeah. And although we, we channel and we offer a variety of other services, um, genuinely, we began to explore you and I just in chatting informally, how is it that we can show up providing a service that's meaning to others to yeah. support them? Yeah, that's the, that's the big, it, it's, I want to say it's been a theme for me for a long time, but it's now a theme that, that I think that myself and many other people are communicating and many people are sort of waking up to the idea of service um, as being a, an integral integral, sorry, part of spirituality. You know, I think we went through the sort of law of attraction where everyone was just trying to manifest everything. And yes. I, I, I think that that's not quite the point. I think it's to learn your own power, your power being that you have, that you do create your own reality. But, but in truth, we're, you know, we're here to to take care of each other. We're here to serve each other. And and the people who are on the spiritual path should be the ones doing that first, you know. And and so that's really the I mean, there's no shoulds, but but for me that it feels like where we're going in this world. That we have to we have to start looking at our world and helping the people that really need help and and you know, we we've t we take pretty good care of ourselves. A lot of us, if not, that is sometimes the service is to yourself, um, but but it, but also it's it's to it's to other people and and people who are really in need, people who really have big needs. So, yeah, that's that's the. I mean, that's part of my dharma. That's part of my uh, uh, commitment as a as a spiritual being. That you know. It's the, uh, one of the first gurus that I really followed was uh, Baba, uh, Neem Karoli Baba, and he, his thing was love, serve, remember, you know, and service was second. Love was first, service was second, and remembering, you know, remembering who you are. And there's really not much else. If you want to see the face of God, you will see it in another person. Absolutely. You serve them as you serve them. So, Yeah. No, that's such a beautiful expression. And it's a shame not to be here now taking advantage of these platforms, these opportunities to, to, I certainly know I'm always saying that, you know, when we show up, we show up and, and everybody is a mirror for each other. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of like we have, I guess what we were exploring is how do we use these platforms to best serve and to best, um, 
Well, I think I think in this conversation we use the platform to talk about it, but I think that the service comes with your feet on the ground, the people that are around, you know, I mean, we can talk to each other all the time in these sort of closed groups, but we're yeah. no good to the world if we don't get off the internet and get out into the world. And it can exactly. really be anything. I mean, it could be, you know, organizing a picking up trash in your neighborhood or doing something with children or organizing something for poor people, but, but people should, well, again, this should work. It would be nice. It would be a very awesome thing if, if, if someone felt the fire within them and said, you know what, I see a need and, and I want to, I want to help that need, or I, I perceive that there's a need, where can I help? You know, and, and that's really the, that's really what I'd like to, to inspire people is to get out there and, you know, become part of their community, part of their their surroundings and impact it yes. in a way that, that you would want to change it, take the take the initiative to go out and, and do something, whatever that will be. But that's really up to the person. It's up to what their goal is and what their passion and their abilities are and the capabilities. But it can be really small. You know, you could just notice that your old neighbor across the street needs their you know, needs their sidewalk uh, swept or or something, something. But some, it should be taking really action now. Taking and action. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it can be too, as simple as, you know, going out and sharing your light. I mean, sharing, sharing your smile, yeah. sharing your energy, sharing your flow, just showing up with the expression of being you. I mean, that is huge. We have science, we have research to back um, how, how, what a ripple effect that creates. I would, I would, I would challenge you to say that we should do that anyway. Absolutely. It should be our primary mode of being, yes. that we should always be sharing our light. We should always be sharing our smile. I, I'm particularly talking about picking something and, and taking an action of it. Because everyone could say, well, I, you know, I smile at people all the time. That's great. But I think the world, the call now is, is to do something, to really serve each other and to develop not only within ourselves, but within our children an ideal of what it means to serve each other. Right. You no. Know? Right. So let's talk about a call to action. What are you feeling particularly called toward at this well, time? Well, I do a couple of things. I, I help musicians. I help uh, blues musicians. I have a, a foundation um, that I work with blues musicians, helping them take a step in their career. And, and I'm developing a youth program uh, for younger ones to, to have a place to, um, yeah, to have more opportunity especially in the Netherlands. Um, I'm also, uh, when I go to India, I'm going to be working with children, uh, teaching them uh, song and, and music and, and just awakening that with them. And, oh. yeah. Well, I thought you had your music here. Would you like to set the tone and share some music with us? Right now, no. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just asking. No, no I, I, do, um, I do, I'm a singer and I, uh, and I do mantra I don't do Hindustani music. I'm not a Hindustani singer, but I do the bhajans. I don't, I sing like kirtan, but not, I'm not a whoa kind of <laughs> singer. <laughs> I can't do that. I don't have that to vocal training, but I just sing regular bhajan and worship music. And for children, you know, you can always incorporate music, especially for, you know, it gives them joy and um, it just teaches them some skill. There's a lot of things you can do games and, and things like that. So that's what I'll be doing when I'm in India, you know, working with the little village kids and just playing with them, you know. That's wonderful. And you're planning on returning there soon? Or is yeah, I'll the be idea? back there in October. I, I'm waiting on the final days. It'll be mid-October or early November. I'm going back there. Wonderful. Yeah. So, and I know that we, when we, when we spoke, I just tried to uh, navigate this because uh, I see I have to push it to bring myself. No, you don't have to do anything. You shouldn't do anything. Just talk. It's coming up on my screen, and that means it's coming up on the. You don't have to click with the white box each time. If you have the white box off, it'll switch automatically. Okay. Well, I'm just trying Is it to doing it or no? Not for me. I don't perceive it. Do I you have a white box around the, the picture? No, not right now because I have. No, no, hmm. because I'm down in the corner. So I'm just assuming that that's... Oh, well, then click on yourself so you can see yourself. <laughs> oh, I don't 
<laughs> there. Uh, you should be able to see yourself. I'm feeling so tremendously. Um, I just want to speak to to your um, talking about children for a moment. You're going yeah. into the and I just felt your energy just like it just expanded. And I just think children are so fun. You know, it's just nice. Oh. I don't have any, so I I get to play with other people's, but I'm also happy that I get to give them back. <laughs> it's over. Well, and we certainly do perceive all everyone as our family and as our child, yeah. and even connecting with the inner child of an adult. But for me, it's it's very much about our children at the moment, and what is it that we can be doing now, and our call to action, and getting out there to um, to create a world that's that's going to be sustainable and supportive to their needs. Yeah. Well. And yeah, it depends on where you are in the world and depends on, you know, what, you know, if you're in a place where, where I'm going, I, we're talking about basic needs, you know, basic needs, food and shelter and things like that. But, but if we're fortunate enough to live in the West and you have a child that, you know, you're living the life in the house and the food is not really a problem and things like that, your job as a parent is to, you know, imbue with them by by your own example the empathy that right. for the rest of the world and now that the world is sort of so crazy you know you give them the tools to understand that that they create their world and that that they'll be able to also participate in the change of it and and also through your example working on the change of things you know as opposed to talking about how bad things are talk about the world that you want yeah and start putting your life in that direction for them so that they have hope. You know, give show them examples of people who are doing stuff and let them get involved in that way. I think that it would be terrible to grow up always thinking that nothing is going well and the world is going to crap. And, you know, w whether that's true or not, I don't believe that is, but whether that's true or not, if you focus on it, that's definitely what you're going to get. So focus on what you really want and what an adventure and an honor you have to to mold the the potential soul of 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 an of another human being you know what an honor absolutely and this is this sounds like a very similar kind of teaching and that is like we have to place our attention on what we want to see more of and yes. i certainly know for me, in my my surroundings, I mean, every every moment presents a choice point. It, pre it, pre it presents two options. Which way am I going to view it? Yeah. And and if we begin to really get out there and really look at the magic that's all around us, so look at what's coming alive in our environment. Look what the initiatives that are happening in our own community. Look at like I mean, just place your attention on that which you want to see more of, and get involved and engaged in that. Yeah, and it can be so anything, you know. If you if you yeah. think to yourself like, what is it I love to do? What is my hobby? Think about how you can share that with someone else. You know, maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you're a great art teacher, or you're, you know, you're the best. I don't know, you were the best roller skater in your neighborhood. I mean, you could, you can do anything. It's just as long as you're in some way sharing with somebody else, just in some way sharing something. Maybe you're a person, there's a wonderful woman who used to be part of Human Colony and she used to upcycle clothes and she would make coats for people, you know? And she just, she just did that out of her own, out of her own motivation, her own good heart, you know? Just find something in every, that you can say, you know, I am actively choosing service. Even when it's not the most convenient thing, you know, and right. it makes a difference. You get in this attitude of gratitude. You, you really start to notice what you have. And, and even if it's not a lot, you have more than probably someone else. And you always have something to give, especially all the people who are talking about that they're experiencing all these wonderful spiritual gifts you know, what's the, what's the sense of being in joy if you're not sharing it? What's the sense of experiencing love if you're not sharing it? And, and that's, that's really our calling. And if it's not, it, even in your mind, then, then maybe this isn't a way to think about it. Maybe people always want to be involved. They want to do something. 
You know, they always want to do something, but th there's something very actively that any, every single one of us can choose to do today or this week or this month, you know. And if you don't have a cause you want to get involved with, believe me, there are a million causes to join, you know. Yes. Yes, and this is what I'm finding when you speak about spiritual gifts and activations and awakening, and and I'm certainly finding that uh, with those among um, that I've met through the Illumination Network, as things can become activated, um, so is activated that call as you're speaking, as we're talking about that call to action. They want to be in service. They want to be offering. When you discover, I mean, just how powerful and just how you do have that ability to heal self and others and, and 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 it doesn't always have to be anything like you lay crystals on them or right. it can just be again like you said a smile the, my mom used to uh, well my mom is a nurse she's not practicing now she's retired but she used to do home health care yes. and she worked um and we would go into somebody's homes she would take me because she would pick me up from school and I'd have to stay with her until, you know, she was done. So it would be from like, you know, 2.30 in the afternoon till around 6. And we went to some of these homes and you would see people and they barely had running water, you know. And just, you know, my mom would go in and change their dressings and, and deal with them. And I had to help. But I got to see so much. And I would see families that, you know, really took care of their parent or, you know, just... It, it inspired something in me to say, you know, you have to, you have to care for people because what else would these people do, you know? So it doesn't have to be anything dramatic, but it, it's just, I'm just saying that I, I saw it and it doesn't have to be, I think in some ways the less laced with spiritual talk, but you can right. just go and spend time with someone who just needs your company right. without having thinking that you're going to do something for them. Do you know what I mean? If you can spend time. I can give you a suggestion. Sure. Go ahead, Deb. I used to do, and which I should probably take up again is um, assisted living centers and nursing homes. There are so many people sure. that get no visitors. Yeah. yeah. I do. And they're they so lonely. Yes. Yeah. And I used to do it when my dad was in one. Um, I met so many that have nobody. Yeah. And I used to sit with them. Yeah, that's just. So I mean, these, I, there were men that would sit there and cry to me, cry. They had, I mean, they, they'd lost everybody in their family. They were the last survivor. It was just heartbreaking. And you it's know, so easy. Yeah, it's so easy. It's just your time. It's just your time, you know. Well, exactly. And my mom used to always say, there before the grace of God go I, you know. In any moment, it can always be, it can be any one of us that needs something. I always think about, like, how fortunate I've been that I just somehow have been lucky. Like, I have a neighbor who will always help me. I have family that is always helping me. But there's people that have no one. And they have nothing. And they just, you know, they might be in your circle or they might not be. You might have to go out and find them. And it's not about fixing anybody, but it's just if you have something to contribute, you, you can always do it just by your time, just sitting, sitting with them. How much does that mean that someone has come for them? You know? We, yes. Thanks. Yes. Jeff. That was really true. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's, 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 we have to be. We, and, and the thing is, is that we, we can't do everything for the glory of doing it. You know, if you're, if you're helping someone, it's not like you come back and say, oh, I did this, I did that. You know, that's not why you're doing it. You're doing it because it's something that's beautiful and needs to be done, but you maybe shouldn't tell anybody. You don't have to justify it or broadcast it, you know. You just exactly. To, yeah. it, it's, not a, it's not a gift to that person if you're going to tell everybody, oh, look what I did. Well, Where's the gift in that? It, it's when, yeah, exactly. And it's, I'm sure it was probably hard for you in times to sit there and, 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 and ex share that emotion with them, 
you know. It wasn't hard for me. It was hard. Like, you know, it was hard. It was hard, hard watching his heartbreak or their heartbreak. Yeah. But how much better are you and how much does that stretch you and give you more empathy and more insight? You know, we, we, every one of us can be in that situation. Every one of us. It doesn't matter how sure. big you think your family is. You know, you hear about people who go to nursing homes and the families just stop showing up. Every you know? day. My daughter-in-law works in a nursing home. She sees it every day. Yeah. And, and maybe that person wasn't that nice, you know, <laughs> at one moment, maybe they weren't so nice. And, and, uh, you know, that's why, <laughs> you know, the family's kind of like, well, but, but they need somebody, yeah. they need empathy and they need, well, we all need it, but we get it a lot of times by giving it. And so, you know, Matt Kahn always says, say the words to yourself or give to yourself what you have been wanting from, from other people. I'd, I'd also like to say, give that to other people what you've, you've also been needed, you know, so that it will create something in you. you. You just having that experience now teaches you so much. The next time you see someone, you, you have a, a, a probably a much higher chance of wanting to sit with them, you know? So, but that's my, yeah, that's my thing. I, I can't say to everyone, oh, they have to do anything. I just, I just see in the spiritual world, and this is my own criticism of it, and it's not a criticism, it's an observation, but it's sort of criticism. I just see there's a lot of me, 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 look at me, I'm so spiritual, oh, I'm a healer, oh, I'm this, and, they're, and people are doing nothing for each other. It has become the most, it's become sort of most ego-driven thing and it's wonderful to awaken, but it's it's awaken to the awaken to your humanity, awaken to your love. I don't care if you can shoot sparks out of your hand, you know. If you're a jerk, you're a jerk. You know, yeah. I can't shoot yeah. sparks out. I was hoping maybe a spark. Would go. But <laughs> just be a kind person, you know. Be a. Be oh my a, goodness! I thought you were going to say out of your butt. Well, Deb, if the sparks come out of anywhere, that's probably probably where it's gonna happen. <laughs> Especially after that black bean burger that blew me up the other day. I want to see that now. Yeah, I don't think I'll be broadcasting that. But but anyway, just you know, just just yeah, be, you know, be kind. Be kind. That is huge, Karen. We can't underestimate that. I mean, I know I've opened it up with that comment earlier about just shining your light by showing up and smiling. And, and that was just as a, a means to having this conversation about how yeah. people right now are creating connection. You know, in all the work I've done, I mean, I can talk all the alphabets of all the um, services that we come to learn to provide, uh, psychotherapists, so on and so forth. And at the end of the day, the greatest practice, 99% of the time, the success rate is on the rapport and the connection you create just by simply showing up, yeah. being present and listening. Because at the end of the day, it's about that. And that is about the humanity and that is about the support. And that's saying, you're not alone, I'm here, I'm hearing you. And you know, those are the clients that walk away feeling and perceiving as though they've really received a service. It's not about, I'm gonna be doing dialectical behavioral therapy for you over a course of six sessions and la 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 la, and aren't I wonderful and I know all these tools. Yeah. See this eye contact, the showing up. And then that's the awakening for me is about, awakening is the gift of awakening to light and you revealing you to you. So now you've had that revelation and now cultivate that, the humanity, the care, and the compassion within your own heart center, within you. And then that will lead you to where you need to be and how you need to show up for others. But you got to do that and show up for you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it seems you like... You take care of you first. Yeah. You know, because if you're, if you're all broken down and, and you know, you, you can't yeah. you're useless... <laughs> for everybody else, including especially yourself. So you have to be your first priority. Your self care is is well, very important. Yeah. I've always said, you know, with that piece too. I've always said one of the best teachers, the greatest teachers for me, is children. They have tremendous. They have great bullshit detectors. 
So they were my greatest teachers in showing up and being integral and having authenticity. So that's where we call, we have to do that inner work. We have to do that work and raise our own and take care of ourselves so that we can genuinely show up in the presence of another. Yeah. You know, everybody's, there's so many, generally so many layers to receiving and how wonderful it is just to be seen and to have someone show up and say, there is no trap doors here. There's no ulterior motives. I'm just here to hear you right now and just show, like, you know, show up for you. Yeah. It's those simple things. Connection. I love when my heart is just, I have to say, it's really pounding right now. Mm -hmm. It's so much joy. And yeah, just, I mean, everybody, I, I used to, uh, there was an old blues musician, old guy who lived here. He'd lived here forever. He was old when I met him, but he was, um, he was alone and he was living in a sort of, they call them holiday houses, which are sort of like a fixed trailer house, but they're quite small, but they're in like a holiday park. And he was living in one of those full time. And he just, you know, he would call, all he would do every day is call everybody, be like, yes. hey, how you doing? And, you know, it just because he was lonely and you would just take his call. And spend yeah. that, you know, 15 minutes with him, you know, and talk and hear the same stories every time and, you know, and laugh when he laughed and, and just, just to give him that feeling like there was someone there for him. And I used to make him pies, you know, I used to make pies for him. Like he would, I, I would make him like three pies at a time and I'd take them to him. And for him, it was just, you know, it was just the, it was, for me, it was just the joy of it, you know, but for yeah. him, it was so necessary. He just, he needed the connection. He wanted the connection. There's just tons of people. I, you, you don't have to look very far. No. You know, no. And, and it we, could be someone in your family. Or, you know, sometimes people in your family trigger you, and it's really difficult. <laughs> They're the ones that are the hardest to love. It's, but, yeah, maybe get your friend to go to your, your aunt, and you go to her aunt. Go to her, go to her mom's house, that sort yeah. of thing. I love that idea, Karen. You know, just so, you know. I don't know. But anyway, I, that's, that's what I mean. I didn't think that that's what this conversation was going to be. But it, that's really so heavy in my in my heart and and in what I feel, you know, what I what I really feel is very active for us now. I think we've had many years of talking, we've had many years of, you know, shooting crystals, I mean, shooting sparks out of different areas of our body. <laughs> so it's sort of like what does wonder woman want to do now <laughs> yeah okay wonder it's woman yeah. yeah but i don't know i just i just think it's i think it's not talked about enough and i and i think it, and as little as it's talked about i don't know that it's acted on enough you see you see a lot of people doing wonderful things that are out there so you know it's just maybe join them in some way shape or form in any way i mean maybe if it's just inspiring your company to give you know donations to countries that are trying to build water access for people or, or whatever you, whatever you can do, but make it, make it like, okay, now I've done my service. I'm done, but make your life about that. You know, how can I serve? How can I serve it as, as, as many opportunities as I can have? And every one of us can be effective. Every one of it, it can be in your own neighborhood. Absolutely. You know, and convincing your neighborhood board to, to plant, you know, fruit trees as opposed to just random trees, creating a company, a, a, a neighborhood garden, doing something, anything that's environmentally that, that, that lines up with your own values so that you can really impact the world. You know, we, we're small voices, but we're not as small as we think. So otherwise, like to bring it, bring it around too to the spirituality piece and the observation that, you know, we have this community who is, who is um, meeting in closed spaces or, or uh, you know, we move from one, we can be on Facebook all day long. There's so much information out there on YouTube. What is getting us outdoors? What are we going to do with that information? Where are we going to take that? How are we going to you know, once we cultivate it, or are we even trying to cultivate it within ourselves? Or isn't that something we want to encourage along the way? I think along the way, I think, yeah, you, I don't think you have to be ready to be a nice person. I don't no. know how, <laughs> I 
don't know how the spirituality works, but I think that first thing that happens is we have this realization that we're all a community, that we're all a tribe, that we're all in this together. Whether, you know, the people know it, we're still all in it together. And it's for us to act in that way. It's for us to do that. And, and, and I would love to see more posts about less about auras and, and, and things like that. And more about like, Hey, I started this community project. Do you want to get involved? Hey, you know, maybe this is something for your community or something like that. I would, I would like to see that as more, as opposed to, you know, the transmission of yet another, and, and I'm a channel, so I may be, you know, stabbing myself with my own foot here, but I'd like to see more about what people are doing with their lives than what they're talking about happening in the atmosphere of the ionosphere of the, the planet. <laughs> I don't know. So being, being I'm, I'm your... trying not to, I'm trying not to, uh, you know, I, I just, but that's just, that, that's sort of my really, my genuine feelings. It really is it's my genuine feelings. Maybe if I provide this mix, feedback. 50 like... mix. Well, I'm going to create a bridge for you. Perhaps, maybe I'm going to offer you a bridge here. Okay. And that is, you know, you're speaking about being a channeler and then you're speaking about this and you're saying, you know, is it either or? No, it's not either have... or. I'm just saying, no, I don't, I, just... I don't want to say no, like, I don't agree with channeled messages because of course I do. I would just like to see some other things from us. But the, from of us. But the bridge I wanted to offer you, Karen, yeah. is, you know, I know when we, we've chatted, we hadn't seen each other's stuff. And yeah. so you were kind enough to share with me the YouTube video that was with Kevin Park, correct? Yeah. And you know what? I was so consumed by I had a huge family event, a memorial golf tournament yesterday. And once I began watching you, I couldn't stop. And, oh. and what I want to share with you here and now is when you were saying, you know, you were, you were um, channeling Theos. Mm, yeah. I was like, but this is the conversation, Karen, I had with you. This is how, for me, you showed up. This is how I perceived you as Theos. I mean, I didn't see you. And, and so this is a part of what we're doing. It's sort of like when we connect to that higher source of all that is. When we connect to something that's greater and it reveals itself as our true essence and who we are, mm -hmm. then it just becomes our drama, who we are and how we show up. So mm -hmm. some might perceive it as channeling, but for me, I perceived it as this is Karen. This is the essence. This is what she's embodying oh, and facing. And this is what I would like to encourage and promote. When someone kind of opens up and they find their passion and their greatest passion and desire is to be of support and service to others through, let's say, healing or through channeling. They've tapped into something. They've tapped into an essence, a consciousness, a stream of higher consciousness. Now, what can we do with that? How do we make that? How do we make bring that flow into our everyday? And I think that's what we're talking about here, too. Yeah. I think Mary the knowledge is, I think the knowledge of stuff is good, but without the actual right. putting the stuff into practice, and I think that's what you're yeah. saying, is, is ne the next step. It's like right. we have so much information. So now how do we apply the information? How do we right. act how, on the information? Yeah. How do we embody that? that know that to be our our living truth yeah and how do we now emulate that like how do we just go out there and be that i mean jesus comes through many are you know might connect with that stream of consciousness and christ consciousness and be channeling and and then but really the message is what we're meant to act on and we're supposed to put that into a form of actionable otherwise it's just we're just sitting for entertainment. And, and I think we've gotten so plugged in to being entertained as all of that outside of ourselves. Yeah. I see, you know when that's being channeled in and I'm really perceiving it, then I really feel that it, 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 it expands me to the point where I want to now go out and do something. I, yeah, I, I was just thinking of Jesus, you know, think about Jesus. Jesus, he walked around, he did a little preaching. Yes. Did a little eating of people, did a little healing of people, sat down, did a little talking to people, ate a few dinners. You know what I mean? He, he had a very balanced ministry. It wasn't just one thing or the other. And it was, 
imbued with his his own giving of his gifts to people. Right. So now I'm going to show up. I'm going to walk that talk. I'm going to show up mirroring that. And I'm going to, and you can, and then people need to see that. They need to see more of that showing up in and around them. That's why they're saying so many people. I mean, who do we think we're not? I mean, we're everything, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, we're all of it. We're all that wonderful, like, source of all that is and we've had some experiences and now we have an opportunity to come into the higher learning but the higher learning through the higher practice of what i learned yeah. you know it's that it's that beautiful that wonderful when we talk about twin flame we could say that's our inner marriage that's our sacred marriage to self you know that it just it's just for me i mean i mean this is what because certainly um it's a it's a wonderful thing when we tap in, when we've done, cleared out some of that density and we've, we've begun to tap into all these wonderful streams. So if it's, for instance, if you just have a Palladier or Arcturian even, I mean, what is that? And then how is that showing up in your life and how do you relate to that? And how do you strengthen that and embody and embrace that? If you're talking about, you know, for instance, peace, how do you show up being that? Right. Because that's who, you know, rather than just saying that's something outside of me, that is an integrated whole part of you. Right. You know, right. otherwise you wouldn't know about it. Yeah, the Arcturians are really about peace. And, and if you are of Arcturian yeah. descent and you have that energy, then how is that, how are you manifesting that in your life? How are you, right. how are you using that strength of your character as a person, that, that part of your DNA to really... Yeah impact the world you know there's a reason why people are having the memories of who they are in those right. ways so that they can actively utilize that gift you know the gift of the nature of their nature you know right. you know what i mean if it's if they are Arcturian, then it's within their nature to have this certain personality or certain way about them if you're a you know a Pleiadian it's your sort of nature so it's your it's your part of your job to find yeah. out what does that mean for me and myself and what if, how can I spread that out into the world so that I can make this world better I love that and that's how yeah. that's my guidance it's kind of like we're bringing this these transmissions information this but this is meant to be actionable. This is what we're yeah. here we're creating new and we've been collapsing, you know, I mean, collapsing all the time and karma and clearing up the density, but that, okay. So that paves the way for what we create with who we are. We're all creators of our own creation. So what do we want to create and collaborate, co-create now? And they're here. Obviously so many of us are touching into the nature of who we are. So now embrace and embody. That's what I'd like to bridge the two. Right. Embrace and embody that energy. And how do you emulate what's in your DNA? Now you're activated to your Arcturian or you're activated to your, your Mary Magdalene, your teacher, your, or your Kali. How do you use that fire that, you know, how do you use if you, if you connect with the elementals, the, the fairy realm, you know, making things beautiful, going out and, and, and embracing the nature of you through the nature that's out on our planet. Because that's our planet and our shine too. You know, mm -hmm. our shine. So, so I don't, uh, that's what I would like to see. Like, yes, let's, let's, be, let's, let's bring that information through, but then now let's, let's make it actionable. Let's, let's unpack that and really put that into service. Yeah, find, I mean, find out whatever it is that you're in, whatever inspires you, whenever you look at something and go, gosh, I just think it should be different. Maybe explore, what does it take to make it different? Right. You know? I mean, maybe right. it's just writing a letter to the city and saying, can I plant flowers around this tree? Or, or it can be anything. They actually, I, the reason I bring that up is they, they started that here. They have along the, along the, uh, sidewalks it's sort of this you know you've got all these trees and they've said that every because i live in the city that every uh person has the right within say 10 meters of their home to beautify the sidewalk 
So now what I'm seeing is this amazing like community thing of people like planting flowers around the trees. And um, this one guy put a chair out and he wrote on the chair. It's just a nice white chair. And he put a chair and he fixed it down. And he said, this is a relaxed, uh, relaxing chair. He says it in Dutch, but this is a relaxing chair to be used and enjoyed by anyone. Enjoy. Wow. And he just set it there. So now when I'm walking my dogs, I see just random people sitting on the chair and enjoying the, you know, it's just lovely, kind things like that that we can do for each other, that we're yeah. serving our community. We're, we're, we're making it more friendly. We're making it more cozy, you know? I, I just think that stuff is so important and it, it can be the smallest little thing. But and it's never, ever, it's never, it's never that. done. That's the thing too. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to use the mirrors that are here performing these beautiful souls, like Deb, for instance, if you don't mind, Deb, I'm just going to say I've had an opportunity to get to know Deb, and I know what she does for for Gaia and her love and, and just the time that she spends in her garden, and she spends just giving, giving her light languages to echo that out into the cosmos or back and, and her feet on the ground, and she shares that, and she shares that creator joy with each and every one of us. And Erin packed up a car, took her two children on a journey across. She didn't know where she was going, but it was a car, well, she had a, a slightly mapped out, but she was open to it. And she said, she just had this call, this call to action, this call, this need to just go out and be in the face of, show up and be the humanity that we want to cultivate, you know, and just show up and meet people and, and, and just, just be herself and bring her children out and expose them to that. And then um, Ilona, she posts some wonderful, beautiful things for others. And that gives them a, a gentle read or gives them something graceful and something that's, that's not bombarding them with any form of negativity. And all of that to me is, I mean, even if we just do it in one small community, it gets us activated to know that that's making a difference. We're, being, we're seeing each other. And then that brings us out or asking for each other for help. For yeah. me, um, Karen, that was a huge thing. That's not it is something. A big thing. Yeah, it is. And that when anyone opens themselves up, makes themselves, I don't want anyone to feel. That's just an old um, energy we can release around. We make ourselves vulnerable by asking for support. In my estimation, from my experience, and I still struggle with it. It gives me strength. It gives me strength because, you know, it is we we we're in service but we're, the service to others is the service of receiving as well it's that give and that that reciprocity so what am i teaching if i'm always delivering messages and then we're saying i need a bit of a hand back yeah. you know I'm, I'm experiencing this right now it makes me real and it makes me whole and it doesn't put me up here it right. puts me and that's you know that's I just want an opportunity, and that's what I'm trying to cultivate right now, is an opportunity where we can come be a family and, 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 and learn what that means again so that we take that out beyond the walls of just on, you know, a network. We, we're networking that into our own daily lives yeah. with our families or in our community when we go out. But you and, have to also remember that every single person, we're not all in the same place. And that's a good thing, actually. You know, we're sprinkled yeah. all over the world. And and so you, because the world is pretty big, so we need as many people spread out as, as far as possible. And every person can help in their their place. That's why you're in that place. You're not there by accident. And, and if you do feel the need to move, okay, that's a different thing. But still, where you are right now is where you are supposed to be and that's where you're supposed to be having your your impact that's where you're shining your light you know and, yes and so I, start to th think about how unique you are in that area and that you have you know and you'll probably find other people that also ab absolutely and look at us this is soul family this is our over soul we're connecting we're finding each other i love how you said sprinkling because i just saw this wonderful like these lights just just twinkling and falling. I mean, that's how we planned it. That's yeah. how we, we planned it. And yet there's no obstacles. When the time is right, we find each other, however it's meant to be. Well, we're very fortunate and to have the technology to 
bring people yeah. together and everything so that we can yeah. sort of, you know, I always, I always wish that you could kind of like, you know, how people do the, and then they're like, yeah. great. I wish like we could, <laughs> you know, everyone, puts know. Head, you know, well, how many of us find, you know, we show up, we find each other. We all of a sudden we feel this connection to someone else that we just met that feels deeper <clears throat> deeper than anything else we've experienced if we've been raised in a particular family or, or we've had social culture and conditioning around us and 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 people in our or you know we might spend eight nine ten hours in a work environment and feel estranged from the person in the office across from us and here we feel like we found family we found home and and now we can go out and do something with that i like the idea too of channeling when you just right. said like we have technology and it made me think about that's what these channel transmissions are it's technology that we have created that has bridged the get the perceivable gap we once we once may have um thought existed and now we have that communication with our family or with our over you know something greater and that's whole within us so how can i be of service to you what this information you're sharing with me what would you like me to do with it is there a way i can put it in service is there a way that you know how well, i think it has to come it? from the person themselves because you know there was a great guy a uh, musician that i used to know and he used to say no one can do what you do better than you right you know nothing whatever is born out of you personally each one of us personally is our own genuine yes that we have you know and it like it literally can be anything, you know, well, it can be, and, and, but, it, but as long as it's coming from you and from your heart, that's a perfect thing. That's the only thing it needs to be. There's nothing that, that, you know, you, you shouldn't be assigned, you know, as, I mean, if you want, you know, people can assign you to do stuff, but, but when you, when you do something that you have a passion for, when you say, you know, I'm meeting this need because this is something that I feel it's really for me. I get the question all the time. It was like, how can I serve? How can I, you know, expand spiritually? And you, you, that will happen when you serve people, you know? That's right. It, it, it opens. That'll be very... the result. That'll be the side effect. If you, there was a great, there's a great Swami in, um, in India and he, he really, he had a, guru who was an enlightened master and he sat at his feet and he wanted to you know learn and he learned everything he could learn and he was one of those people that like stood on one foot for hours every single day to prove his you know desire and finally after many years uh he completed his training and he says okay so what do i you know how do I, when do I get this special knowledge that I'm waiting for? And the guru said, now go and serve people. He, he said, you run this ashram and you serve people for the next, till the end of your life. And maybe by then you'll understand, you know, and that's, it's, it's in the service. You can, you can't learn something. One, it's hard to learn something you haven't experienced or seen. You can read about something you can hear about something, but unless you actually experience it, you know, either experientially by seeing it or being involved in it, you don't, you don't learn it. And what we need to learn as human beings in this moment in time is humanity. That's right. We need to learn empathy. We talk about oneness, but if we cannot look at another person and realize that that person is also God, we will never get there. And all of the people who are waiting for, you know, the, the aliens and, and the angels and I don't know, anybody to come and save us, we ha will save ourselves. And we will save ourselves by loving each other. We will save ourselves by taking care of each other. We will save ourselves only in that way. So well, we embody, we embody who embody. we are. Yeah. It's it's the idea of going to have first contact, and my point continues to be, this is first contact. Yeah, You're you were saying that the other day. I thought that was really cool. You know, absolutely. Yeah. This is your ascended it's, master. Yeah, in your this eyes, alien, and so were you. I mean, looking into your eyes and looking into the eyes of Source that shines back and mirrors back to me through everyone. That in, that to me is first contact. So get out there and make first contact. 
get out there and use your eyes and use your heart and act. And that's how you're going to receive. That's where your that's where your extraterrestrial alien presence is. That's where your ascended masters are. That's where yeah. your archangels are. That's where that's I mean, why do you particularly feel like you're drawn to a certain, you know, a certain something? I mean, that is because that is an essence of who you are. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. The, but to me, it's like there's no way. We came here as that. Sorry, we came there. No, no, I was agreeing with you. I think like a lot of people will say, why do I feel connected to this? Why do I feel connected to that? Because it's calling you. Right. You know, and but it's not just beings, not just aliens calling to us or angels. It's also the things that we're drawn to in life. Why do I love this? Why do I love that? You know, because it's something that you should be exploring it's something that you have an affinity for and it's something that you can do so to find your you know we have what's called dharma dharma is our purpose but we have many dharmas you know we have dharmas that match our chakras you know? yeah. and you know our basic dharma is, is is to know by knowing who you are and we talk about it all the time but knowing who you are and what is it that you're drawn to? What is it you have affinities for? And the, the, a lot of times the way people get out of balance is by, because we grow up in a society that tells you, oh, be a lawyer, be a doctor, be a thing. If that's your calling and that's great, but for a lot of people, that's not it. And so they're out of balance with their own, their own dharma. So one of the ways that you can find out what your dharma is, you can think to yourself, if I, if I had one, you know, millions of dollars and I didn't have to work, what would I do? What would I do if I could choose to do anything? And then that is probably what you should be doing. Yeah. And you should try to shift your life in that direction. And then that, and no that just creates also will create in you also the desire to, to help other people find their dharma, help other people find their passion, help other people find their, that's, that's also a way of serving. Absolutely. And yeah. then if we go back to the, the law of attraction, we know that once we take that leap into it, once we take that actual step into yeah. it, then that's when all the resources and this, and it's not always like you get a pile of money. It could be that you get a connection like my meeting Karen, or you get, you know, you. what's that? For my meeting you, so. Right. Yeah. And it's, it shows up that way. It's like following yeah. all those little threads, you know, it's just following all those little seeds. And I certainly know as someone who's taken some huge leaps this past couple of years and has put much on the line to do so to, to, it's like, I have been provided for, you know, you said about helping someone out. I had to leave yesterday with a clogged sink. I have a very old home here, and Claude Saber, um, I contacted him. He's over, like, he's taking care of it right now. And he said, Tam, I can't get it unblocked because I'm, I'm out of the, that house. And he said, I can't get it unblocked. And, and he said, but I'm going to come back later. I got a better plunger. And I thought, that's what I prayed for. That's what I was saying. Oh, my gosh, like, I'm going to need some support with this. And then having done some personal work, I, I reached out and someone was there. That was the instantaneous. And he, you could tell he felt good helping out. So it's those little things, but they're big things. And that's how someone shows up. I'm I think that, I think that um, this is what I'm just being inspired to say is that when you make the commitment to service, the universe will bring you the opportunity right. to serve. Always. So I would say that, and we can do it now, or you can do it on your own in your own meditation, but just, just, you know, within yourself say, I am a light worker. I am awakening to my, my nature. I am learning every day. And I am stating right now that I am willing to serve in any way and in every way possible, you know? And, and if you say that and, and you really offer that out there, believe me, those opportunities that you say, well, I don't know what I would be doing will come to you. 
and they will come in the moment of inspiration and just the opportunity that you'll start to notice, hey, that person needs a hello, or that person could right. use a cup of coffee, or that person could, you know, if we, if we open our eyes in that way, and we can also say, please open my eyes to the humanity of everyone, including myself, that we start to see the world through that perspective, then we will start to see each other. We will yes. start to see each other. And, and we, we are the ones that have to do it. We're the ones who have to take that up. Then we do it by being willing to, and we do it by, by offering that. So I, I have great hope for everyone oh, yeah. who is on this path. Um, oh yeah. You know, I, I, I think that it's just now a matter of, you know, a lot of people are doing it anyway. I can imagine people are saying, well, I'm serving all this, <laughs> but, well, but I just think within the community of, of the spiritual world, in our spiritual talks that we have, the emphasis now can be on how do we serve each other? What do I do with my spiritual gifts? You know, what do I, what, how, what is my, and if we're outward looking at each other, then it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah, that's just what I'm thinking. No, that's absolutely, I, I love, I can certainly follow that. I do know that we're certainly, I think that's the tipping point. You know, we've, we've come to this space and it's like now, you know, we're ground crew and way showers and it's time to show up and it's time to, and, and, and it's, and we're being, we know, we know what our passions are. We just tune in. I know when I reflect on my life, this is like, this is just the next natural step. Yeah. This is the progression, the flow, the growth, the expansion into even more. So who I am, because I think if we all look back, most of us will look at our, our lives and the experiences we came here to receive, how those experiences, even though in some instances, maybe weren't and the moment we didn't perceive them as the greatest and the most glorious. Now they're our greatest strength. They became our greatest teacher. And now we know that's going to assist us and support us in our mission work or our service. Because now we have that empathy. We should. We should take the time to cultivate the connection to the compassion and the care through that experience gave us, you know. And, and it's time to bridge. It's time to, it's yeah, time to it's move forward. Point that space and I think a lot of people feel overwhelmed perhaps even by the language of service work and for me it's serviceable to show up just being you you know in every facet in every way so whatever is nurturing is just like we're all we've plant this is our seeds they're opening up they're just keep watering them keep watering them and it'll keep growing and they'll keep uh, the garden I believe on this planet of, of so, this is just it's so much more beautiful in every given moment. Yeah. You know, the um, idea that they it was popular a few years ago and we don't hear, you don't hear it as much anymore, but like the pay it forward and, yes. and the, the random acts of kindness and things like that. Those are so, you know, those are all important things as well to yeah. continue to the, do those things. You know, I, I used to, I don't live in the States, but I know that like sometimes like in the lines of like a coffee, you know, everyone's getting their morning coffee and the person in, in front of them would pay for the person behind them. And, you know, they would just continue to, uh, to do that. Just to, I mean, that's one thing. That's always nice to do things like that. I just think if we walk out into our daily life and we're thinking about what can I do for another person and we're not thinking of what does, you know, I'm not getting anything. I, I just think it's just a different, it's just a switch in the mentality of just walking out every day with this idea of, wow, I'm going to keep my eyes open and keep looking to see what can I do? Well, how can I help another person in some way, shape or form? Yeah. With, with whatever it is, maybe it's picking up a piece of trash. Maybe it's just making sure that every day as you walk by this one person sitting on the bench, you say, hi, I hope you're having the best day. Well, that's Whatever just it could be. making cookies and keeping them with you. I believe in force feeding people as you see them, <laughs> you know, just, just, just having, <laughs> just be ready, ready. Like <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> no, but you know, I'm serious, but just being ready on a moment's notice to be that person 
and we're light workers. So, yes. you know, when mean? do we, when do we shine our light? It's not just when it's handy for us or convenient for us, you know? Right. Or when we're going to have the big, the big, the big screen lights shining back. Up. Yeah. It's not just when you're doing your YouTube video or on your YouTube channel or your Facebook live that you're the light worker. It's when you are, you, you are more, you know, you, yeah, you, you, you're, you can be very effective all day long and in very, all very, very tangible ways for people. And, and it's just, yeah, it's, I think it's something to talk about and to encourage it. We will see it. We will see it. If we all start really, really reaching out to each other, there will be a shift and a ripple of in people that will become very tangible, very fast because Kindness begets kindness. And even, right. even when, you know, someone will be amazed by your kindness and they will turn around and do kindness. And if we keep, we keep putting it into the water, you know, there's ripples keep going out, but we can't do it one time and stop. It has no. to be our attitude. And, we, and also too, in the appreciation of other people, start to really notice them and appreciate them and say, wow, you know, I would never decorate my vehicle like that, but gosh, what a, what a creative person and start to really delight in the uniqueness and the, you know, of each human being so that every time you look upon them, it's like a celebration of their creativity. Even if it's not maybe the most healthy life, you have to understand that person is having an experience, but you can also delight in their willingness to, to go there in their life. You know, their willingness to explore that contrast. And if we can really be fascinated and excited and look at each other with like, you know, I wouldn't have, I would have never thought to put beautiful here. Oh. Gosh, now I'm inspired to do that. Yes. You know, do you know what yes. I mean? It's just those things that are so natural and, yeah. Yeah. you know, you with all your beautiful tattoos and I'm sure you well, we were talking, we were talking uh, and we were talking tattoos, but when you were, my mantra in life and how it's always, it's interesting because for me, it was, I am, so I am beautiful, but then I put capitals on the words and the only other sentence I have is this one. It's like, have, um, have courage and be kind. Oh, that's nice. See, you know, and this <laughs> life is certainly, uh, you know, it's required. It's I've had to. It's I've had to show up and, and learn courage, and I've had to. It's it's a courageous act just to just to, just to show up. You know, just to be here and just to open ourselves up to experiences that, you know, I know when I really tap into that love, which, you know, that greatest source of all it is. And it's really like I cannot not go out and express that. I cannot not be the full experience and expression of that. So yeah. when I'm feeling it, I'm just so overwhelmed and blissed out. But I, that's all day, every day. It just increases. And that's what all the great teachers and ancient wisdoms and even the law of attraction talk, the gratitude, go out and give. If you really, if it's, it's shifting a state. And yeah. to me, that's the fastest, that's the fastest fastest way to illumination that's the fastest way to activating your channels that's the fastest way to receiving connection to source yeah. and guidance and that's you know that's going to wake you up and wake up your humanity and the humanity around you and that's when you start seeing the magic unfold and it just you delight with yourself and then you delight how the world starts to mirror back to you something completely entirely different than maybe what you were experiencing even a week ago. You well, know, you get to be that synchronistic, you know, blessing for someone where they're like, you know, I was just feeling so bad and the angels just showed up and told me to have a great day. And I suddenly I felt better. You get to be that, you know, you are that. That is our inner calling. In Course of Miracles, it says it somewhere in there that we are we are the we are the miracle makers. That's we are right. That. We are that. And when you start to be aware, things you know, if you go out with your idea of like, just bring me one person that I can help today, you know. And, and I I like also that that people do programs and stuff, but we're talking about the immediacy of of service of being on, in sort of on call. And if we have, if we go out and we're just saying, you know, bring me one person that I can share something with today 
and it can be anything. It's the universe hears you. Oh, and yes. there's probably a person out there whose vibration is calling for that, you know, and it will bring you together. It will match you. There, I, I'll give you an example. And this is just, just this is a tiny thing, but I was one time walking up a, a staircase and there was a woman walking up a staircase in front of me. And I was just looking around and I had said that, show me some way to serve, you know, and, and I, heard go stand behind this woman now i don't know why i heard that but i i decided to go and she was quite a bit above me, a way above me and i'm talking about a big public you know staircase that goes up and i literally had to go by people and right as i got to this woman she fell backwards and all i did was just catch her like this and i just sort of righted her and she said uh, and she was older. She said, oh, honey, it's so good you were there. I know. And I just said, well, I'm I'm honored to be here. And she says, well, thank you so much. You made my day. <laughs> and I thought, well, yeah, I guess because you can go down, <laughs> down the stairs. But it made my day to say, you know, just to get the opportunity to give in that one way. And the only reason, and I said, wow, that's really something. I said, how did, I said, why did I? You know, I'm, I'm surprised I got that information. And I heard because you were listening, you were open. Yes, yes. And that's probably what... someone else might have heard the call yeah. and went up. But, you know, I got to feel good. She got to not fall down and feel good. It was a great day for everybody. <laughs> right. right. And yeah. see, that, that's being <laughs> open. That's awesome. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. I, really, I appreciate that because I know that everyone... Yeah. who has received that in their own way now is reflecting on how they've been miracle makers. They've shown up right divine moment in time. Yeah. I hear a feedback here. So is that coming through? Maybe for me. The angels are us. I think the angels. That's right. You know. So how many times have we been, like I can reflect on my life, just showing up being me. And, and that was in a uh, uh, period in my time in my life when I didn't particularly I didn't have the, um, the world was, my life wasn't mirroring back for me a sense of worth, okay? And I hadn't really cultivated that inner strength within myself. Um, so I would just show up being me. And when I say that, that's not without any ego. How many times have any of us shown up in a situation and someone has says, oh my gosh, you're my angel. How do you know? Like, I have heard that and I'm sure yeah. many of us have. Or, you know, like this woman who said, wow, like, thank you for being there. We are energy. We are energy wrapped in these beautiful vessels that we are being asked now to nurture and love and care and for and cherish. These are our temples. And we are energy wrapped in these beautiful bodies. And expressing that energy first and foremost, once we unpack the layer of the personality behind that that source so yes there's no accident that you are going to be divinely right time right moment based on the light even if like you said earlier the chakras whatever it is i mean you're going to be the speaker that voice for someone who didn't have the the means to advocate or speak for themselves or or you're going to be the one that's going to show up with the heart that's going to make someone feel loved in that moment when they they feel despair and separation or you're going to be the power that source of fiery energy from the solar plexus in that moment when someone needed you needed that fierceness you know or the root you're going to be there to say it's okay i've got money in my wallet i can give you this pay it forward i mean we've all done these things we need to recognize that we're do it do it because we feel good and that be opens us up to that's when the channeling opens up that's when the guidance comes through and that's when we are really connected to the source of who we genuinely are and it will we'll find will be in those right places and it's i don't know i just get it's it's so cyclical it's so it's so beautiful even yeah. just looking at just who's here now it's just the commitment to to do it it's just the desire wow. to do it and to again have your eyes open to the possibilities, you know, and the possibilities. And also too, for yourself, what we were saying earlier is being willing to ask for the help that you need for yourself. Oh yeah. You know. Well, you know, and it's, 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 
it's, it's, it's a healthy practice. It's one that I've had to learn for myself. And now that I have, I mean, it's amazing because people want to give back. Yeah. They mm-hmm. want to give back. And that's that, that reciprocity. That is the, that's the way of humanity. That's the humanity we want to cultivate. That's what we want to be um, here showing up, doing and, 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 and gifting to our children because these children coming in are well wide awake and aware of what real community should look like. Yeah, they are. And humanity and and caring. I mean, (laughs) I've all observed that with our grandchildren, our children. I know I've talked about that with Deb and Aaron and and many others. And and, uh, and that's our our, our own inner child wants to be expressed that same way. And so if you're appreciative for what you have, everything, then you only will only see beauty around you. If you can really appreciate every part of you, you know, this is a silly thing, but one of my biggest appreciations is for my animals. And my big appreciation for them is that they are now like passed out all over the floor, you know, not a care in the world. When they're thirsty, they walk to their water bowl and there's always water there. They don't doubt that there's water there. They just know that it's there. You know, I have a cat that's so relaxed that, you know how most cats will follow you around in a a meow for their food and stuff. He just sits at his bowl and waits because he knows it's going to be put there. And and for me, I'm so appreciative that like they have that level of certainty of their life, you know? Right. And it's, I mean, it's so basic for them, but how blessed are they in that? That there's, I feel so happy that they can have that level of certainty that they never worry about it. They're not, you know, I've been places, you know, where dogs don't have food and they're scrounging through plastic things, licking the inside of a plastic jar just to get some kind of food and, you know, they're sleeping in filth and they're diseased and, you know, and then I look at mine and, you know, they're just big puddles of fluff. And it's just so, you know, and the only reason that is so is just by some luck of the draw. They were born here, you know, and, and, and just, but we all have so much of that blessedness in our life most of us in the West, everybody's got their challenges, don't get me wrong, but we all have some level, the fact that you're able to take the time and sit and watch a webinar on the internet. It's a luxury. It's a luxury. You have some level of free time. You have some level of something to be appreciative of. If you've got clothes on you right now, I mean, if they're, it doesn't mean they're the latest fashion or they're even the best looking clothes, but you do have clothes on your body, you know, those things are so, you know, it's just, those things are just so taken for granted. And we, you know, if I look at the piles of shoes that I need to go through and get rid of, my God, how obscene is that, that I've got so many shoes that I've got shoes that I haven't worn in years. But I mean, it's obscene, you know, in a way. It's obscene. And am I thankful about it? When I think about it, yes, I am. But to to really acknowledge and to go through your life mentally and think, I am just so blessed in so many ways. I have more than I could ever consume in my, just in my house, more, more shoes than I could ever wear on my feet, more, you know, we have so much and we have, therefore we have so much to give. And if we, we start to really appreciate everything, every time you turn on the light, the light goes on and, and you, you, you're not freezing and you're not, you're not dying of the heat. You're you're not exposed to the elements. You know, you have makeup to put on your face. If you so choose, you have shampoo in your shower. I mean, if your person has nothing, everything I just said doesn't exist for you. That's right. You know, what do you have then? You have yourself and you have needs. And if we appreciate what we have, we can always find a way to serve another person because we, many other people don't have. 
Aaron, can you guys you like... hear me? What'd you say, yeah. Aaron? Hi. Come on in, hon. Oh my gosh, I have so many. Oh, yeah. wow. This is such an important conversation Here. right now. Oh, good. This is something that's been on my mind this week. And I even had this conversation yesterday with a friend about, oh, like, when I consider telepathic communication, I recognize that you're hearing stories in, in one snap picture or an, or an emotion. And I, it's really difficult for me to be my true expression in just words or telling people. It's experiencing me that makes the difference, especially in person. Right. And it's really important that we didn't all just come here to awaken in this moment so that we could all whisper behind the scenes with each other about how amazing it is. Yeah. It's like we came here to change the world. Mm -hmm. That's what we came here to do. So it's really important that we're involving ourselves with everybody, all of the humans everywhere constantly. That is yes. where the work happens. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you have to pick your, pick your things, you know, don't, don't, don't put yourself to, to such a, but yes, you're exactly right. That's, you, I couldn't have said it better. You know, take care for yourself as well, because you are also valuable. You know, you're not expendable That's at all. You're not. That's the you know, beauty of it. Exactly. Yeah. It's the there's something you caring for yourself. The better you are for people, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And it's not very caring to be comparing yourself. Oh, this person can be like this. And this person has all these followers. Like, what are we worried about with this? This is so silly. Well, that's the YouTube version of spirituality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It is, but and I appreciate you know, that's what that's what I was saying earlier. Sorry to interrupt you. That's what I was saying earlier. You know, because I I have to tell you, I rewatched that um, interview with Kevin Moore, and he was in my house. That was he came to my house actually and did another filming with him. But we did that one on the internet, and it, all he kept asking me was, "Can you do this as a business? Why aren't you doing this as a business?" And I thought, I'm not exploring my spirituality so I can start a business. I'm exploring my spirituality mm -hmm. because I want to grow spiritually, you know? Yes. And, and exactly. so many people are spiritual on YouTube. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and, I, and, and I, that's judgy because I don't know what they do when they turn off the video. But if, if you're only looking at your, well, it's sharing it's like spirituality as a business. I, if I see one more thing that says how to grow your spiritual business, is your spiritual business pulling in this many followers? I thought we have missed the point. It's just that it, it's been discouraging to me to have someone show up in my path. Like we're saying, ask for where the service is needed. And then if my brain is immediately like, oh, how much am I going to charge them or or what am I, you know, like, what do I get out of this? Like, oh my gosh, are you serious? I, it's been so in my way, this concern for how to commoditize, I don't know, whatever, whatever well, word you would use I to mean, make this, this, this into. I mean, this is a good subject to get on. You know, there is a way to, in spirituality, see, there's business, you can have a spiritual business and you can charge people for your Loser, <laughs> bring them a product. No, I'm there not you kidding. Go. You're offering them a purchase. product and they're purchasing it. I don't think that's service. Selfless service is something you don't charge for. Selfless mm -hmm. service is a, of giving, it has nothing to do with receiving. So, mm -hmm. this idea that being a spiritual business person because you provide channeling or healing that people are paying for, that is this product that you are selling. That is not service. Now you can say I'm in service because I've decided that that's what I'm offering, but you're no different than the bakery down the street that when you buy something, you get a piece of bread. You know? Thank you. That's the difference. And service has nothing to do with money that you are getting. Mm -hmm. It's giving. Mm -hmm. 
There's a difference. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with having a spiritual business, a business that sells spiritual uh, services. But that is assistance. Services, but, yes. but service as a as a selfless service or, or seva, which they call it in Hindu, S-E-V-A. Seva is selfless service. And it, you don't charge for selfless service. You are giving. <laughs> <laughs> You're the giver. <laughs> the other person is Exactly. Giver, you know. <laughs> yeah. So there's a difference. And I for think sure. that it's been confused by people. It has and, been and confused. It's, it's not to say one is bad because people want channeling. They want to get healing. They want to go to someone and have, you know, great, all the great things that, that all the people out there do. They want those things. And yes, I think that if they're taking your time and you are spending your entire day doing that, I think you should have, you should charge for these services, these products that you are selling. But to talk about that, that you're in service to them and they're paying you, Mm -hmm. not the same they're not the same mm -hmm. so when you that's a really helpful service, differentiation you are serving someone you are serving another person mm -hmm. a community a whatever but they're not the same so for you on the business side you need to look at how it structures you know how much time is it taking you what is your overhead all all the things that you do if you had a you know brick and mortar store or a online service where you're selling training programs or whatever it can be, because that's also part of the spiritual world, but it's not selfless mm -hmm. service unless you do it all for free and you're happy about it, but you can't, it's not selfless service. If you're complaining about doing it and thinking, why isn't this person paying me? I've been listening to them for the last four and a half hours and cleansing their order up and down, you know, <laughs> Which, I'm only saying that because it's that was funny to say, but you but now you know the difference. So don't feel bad about offering a service. And if it's a service and you and you're offering it, you're offering your skill and your education and your knowledge and your your natural talent for something. Of course, people should pay you for that. But that's and, not and definitely that's not selfless service. There's a difference. And I like also, too, for myself, I mean, for me, it's about activating that ability in, in someone who's, you know, they may need that support, that healing, that energy. Um, but then how do we activate that as the source and empower them to recognize that they themselves can heal thyself? You know, well, that's, so I mean, I don't think that, that I don't think that that's the that's you can be in service to someone by giving them the information but if you're charging them you're selling them a, right. you're selling them something that they want right and that's when you're talking about how the intensity of the time and the commitment well i that, mean you know the thing is a separate thing yeah that's a separate thing but that's not selfless service no. that's not you I'm going sure. down into your community and working with the poor people yeah who maybe need that encouragement or holding a free seminar, maybe, but I mean, you can do a balance of stuff. Right. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that kind of bait and switch that goes on in the spiritual world. Join our free seminar so I can sell you this video. Oh. Be clear about what you're doing for people. Yes. Are you serving them or are you selling them something? If you're really serving mm -hmm. them, you can say, fine, here's this video. If you want to buy it, great. Or you can say, I've got something on the video. But I don't know. It's it's my own personal thing. But I think that we have to be clear. And I think we have to be transparent as spiritual people and honest in our offering to them. I took mm -hmm. part in two of these summits. And I don't think I want to do them again because that's what they were. They were free events. And then at the last minute, you know, they're trying to sell the people something. And, and I think that's, it's okay, but I, I still think you could be upfront and say, we're, we're accepting donations. If you feel inspired to donate, great. But not to sort of say, oh, we'll give you a little bit, but if you want more, you have to pay for it. Well, then just be clear about right. it. Yeah. yeah. I like the donation base too, because I'm really sensitive to there being a certain class that has access to things. This goes for tattooing as well. Well, yeah, for tattooing. Think of it. Well, you know how to charge for tattooing. Apply that to your spiritual world or your spiritual oh, services. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. 
Totally. But even in tattooing, I find that I, I, I like to work with people because if you want a beautiful piece of artwork on your body or feel like expressing yourself in that way, yeah. I'm not trying to, you know, only offer something to a certain amount, especially in tattooing. There's a, there's quite a price point and it's nice to have access to things. If what, if a hundred dollars to you is the same as 500 to someone else, you're spending a lot for yourself on something. So there's ways to work with people to give them something that they're longing for. That's an equal exchange, but at least it's not closing the door to anybody. No, and, yeah, that's and in, your own personal choice. But, you know, if, if, mm -hmm. if you have ink, you have to pay for your needles, you have to pay for, you have to pay for the electricity mm -hmm. that's going through the needles, you have to pay for the place where you're sitting, you probably have to pay something towards the electricity and all of those things. You, mm -hmm. I mean, you, listen, I yes. can like tattoos yes. all I want, but someone can come to me, I can't give them a tattoo. So they're also paying for your skill. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a value to it. You have to value uh, it as well. And that's, that's I do normal. appreciate that. That's normal in business, yes. right? Well, in spiritual business, yes. it's a little bit the same. Because you only have mm -hmm. 24 hours in a day, most of us. And you can only do whatever. And you, if you spend your whole day doing all these things for people, and you're mm -hmm. not getting paid, and you have no money coming in, and you have, you know, then you still... <laughs> The electric <laughs> company doesn't expect you, you know, try giving the electric company a healing in place of paying their, your electric bill. Yeah. Oh, man, I agree with you. And I'm working on this. This is huge for me. And it's big for a lot of people, specific... especially women. Mm -hmm. It's a big thing for women because we're, well, we're trying to please everybody all the time. That's what mm -hmm. we're not that. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that's just embodying who you are. I mean, I've always, you know, I mean, when you think about service, many of us we relate to always being in service, giving ourselves. We hadn't even thought that this is something that, I mean, I kind of got excited, and and, and I and I and I'm hoping you as my uh, my you know the eyes in front of me uh, receive this in the way I mean it. I got a little bit excited going, oh my goodness, now I can make money. Now appreciate the word. I know it's been a, but I can make money being me. And that means that's that, that's that, that marriage of both. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, See? the way that you're in service in a business is by, yeah. And then there's times when it's a book session and it's someone, I mean, but Aaron's an example and many have been. I mean, there was an opportunity. She was saying, I want, you know, I want to have a session with you. But the timing, I wasn't perceiving it as right for her. And so here she is asking for my service, but my conscience was telling me, not just yet. And then isn't that how it had rolled out? And then I called you. I said, uh, the guidance is now. And it was perfect mm. timing when it flowed. And that's how I married the two. It wasn't about get the job done with Aaron. It was about following exactly. the flow. Exactly. For something there's a purpose to it and i just followed the guidance why is her soul you know her soul is, is mm -hmm. it's calling to me i'm called to offer this but the timing just wasn't right and i kept delaying her and then i said we got to do it on this day and she's like oh my gosh it was perfect timing to me it was like it was being that flow in the two right mm -hmm. but yeah definitely example of um you know, knowing what it is you're offering and who's seeking what you're offering and how that's of value to them. And then because I value what I have to offer also. So it's, it's, that's how I've been approaching it. It's not making me incredibly wealthy, but it certainly is bringing great opportunities to be the fullest expression of who I am and meet people like you. So all of you here, it's, it's, it's liberating, but for women, um, or let's just say gender, uh, removing the gender, that feminine, that kind of, and I've always had a very strong kind of resonance with that. And I've had to learn to kind of get that sacred masculine, that fiery energy, that action. It's kind of like, mm -hmm. to do, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of words for figuring it out. Just well, I would just, I think, I just want to contribute this, that when you're the one we were talking about the difference between say a service offering a service and being in service, you know, yeah. you can be in service when, when you're offering a service and that goes down to 
how genuinely kind. Why are you doing this? You know, are you doing this because you really know that you have something to offer to help people? Yes. But at the same mm -hmm. time, you know what I mean? That's that's part of that, that that service. That's your kindness. That's your humanity as a person. That's your genuineness it's, as a as as the person yeah. offering the the service that you're offering. That's, that's I think a way a way to explain why this shift in thinking for me and differentiating the two right now is crucial. That's super helpful. But also my brain is actually expressing a lack when I'm concerned. So set my prices. This is what I follow. This is what my time is worth. And then let it go and know that the receiving is going to happen. It's like way more productive for me to be in a vibration that says, I'm going to constantly be presented with everything that I need. Right. And I haven't fully embodied that in this space of concern for, for, you know, how, how much money am I making from doing this I or think, whatever? You know, I have another, I have an additional thought that if you really realize mm -hmm. the difference and, and this is, this, if you really realize that what you're doing is a business you know, for the sake of mm -hmm. making money to, you know, in some way, shape or form support you, then yes. you also have all of the rights that you would have in any other business. You have the right to do your marketing. You have the right to offer specials. You have the right to, you know, do an introductory special to, to, you know, make a sale to, mm you know, all of those things. I mean, I think that that's important mm -hmm. to understand because then you're not sort of saying, okay, I'm, I'm a spiritual healer, but then you just sort of sit around and wait for people to show up. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a business. You, you market to them, you draw them to you, 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 you know, you do it just like any other business, you know, mm -hmm. the service is, is the difference. The service is different. The service is in the, you know, you, why are you, why are you wanting to help your neighbor? Why are you helping the poor people? What, that's service. You can mm -hmm. have a service attitude within that has generated you to go out and learn all these things and you want to help people. But you, but there's a difference between a business. And But but in knowing that, then really approach your, your thing as a business and go out there and generate business for yourself. I have a friend in Australia and she's always busy. She's always busy and I talk to her and she's doing Facebook ads and she's doing ads within her community and she advertises at the local healing center where she does and she she does a introduction uh, workshop at, at the beginning of every fall where people can come and see the different services she offers and she, they get like a mini class and she she generates her public and her people are very happy with her, but she knows that she is running a business, you know? Mm -hmm. And she doesn't confuse the two. And so for her, mm -hmm. you know, how much is this class? She knows how much is it? Because she's done all the work. She knows what it costs to rent the space, what the materials are going to cost her, how much time it's going to cost her. And, you know, if you're doing something, the healing or teaching a class, there's a lot of preparation that goes on. It's not just the moment. You have yeah. to take all of that into, you know, do you need a business license? Do you need some kind of insurance? Do you need... Uh, business cards. I mean, all of that is part of that. That is, that is the business part of it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but th there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that as a, as is absolutely, you know, if you want to be successful in it, you have to approach it, write a business plan, know what you're offering, know what it costs, all those things, you know? Right. Yeah. But don't be afraid of it. I mean, there's a lot of people go, how do I start my spiritual business? Well, you start it by starting a business. Yeah. <laughs> it's simple in that way you serve other mm -hmm. people by your giving the difference mm -hmm. but the, the two are in no way contradictory what's what i perceive in the, the the spiritual world is the people have them confused yeah and then they're angry that someone was... doesn't want to pay them for something they're offering as a service well you're offering a product. You're offering something like that. Mm -hmm. so, but it's okay. I have to I mean, go. We've all this paid for readings so nice. and healings and stuff like Aww. that.
Yeah, I've got to go oh, soon too. So yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Erin. It was lovely to share. It's Happy nice to talking to you. You you be back next Sunday then. <laughs> we'll have some time to mull this all over and and really begin to listen to our own guidance. Why don't we why don't we make sort of like a homework for next week? That would be wonderful. We could that, put that, that this in. week that we at least as we go out into our day, that we look for opportunities to serve each other in any way, creative way that the universe comes up with in anything that we generate within ourselves. And then let's see what, how we go. And, and I would, and what I would like is to hear everybody's, how everyone did and, and what they did and what they discovered and, you know. I love that. It's staying open to observing also what is that attracting more of for you and what is it that you're beginning to experience or what is it that's perhaps opening up that felt very trapped and closed. Um, whatever it is, just really, isn't that a wonderful thing? That's the other thing about connecting with another is about connecting with you. Yeah. So it's like waking, it's being in the moment of the now of you and what is showing up for you based on this flow that you're putting out, you know? So do the homework of if I'm giving, what is, what am I receiving or what's that experience like for you? And, and what, how has that shifted me in some way or what came next, you know? Yeah. How did it feel? Yeah, that's yeah, wonderful. Just, like just be that. open to the, you know, every day before you walk out the door or whatever, just say today, how can I serve? Maybe your phone will start ringing just off the hook, people needing an ear or asking something. <laughs> But. Well, then it's like Aaron used the language of, you know, life being about experiencing, showing up to ourselves. Then we experience ourselves and our own magic. And what is our light really attracting to us? What is our call? Yeah. You know, how are they? How is all that we've channeled or connected to putting us in service in that moment saying, okay, you know, we're going to send you this person because this is your strength or this is where your energy is really activated and and, and you're well prepared and you know what to do if we send you this person. I would like to chat also next week about the idea to something that keeps coming through for guidance for me, for my source of guidance is if we're going to also be offering opportunities to um, strengthen people's connectivity to source and they're channeling their higher self, then let's tune in and say, let's start learning how to ask the questions that are going to guide us and make it meaningful. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful, it's like the network we've got where we have technology. We talked about earlier to talk in this way, but now we have this flowing in. So tell me more. What, how are you you're sharing this with me? How is it relevant? What, how can I put that into practice? Why are you guiding me with that knowledge and yeah. information? And, Nation. you know, and, and what and I'd love to see us start exploring that dynamic relationship that we have growing on mass. That to me gives me real chills to do that, to work with that channeling that way. And I say channeling not outside, inside. So pulling that in. They can identify this is the source that's coming forward. So now we have an opportunity. What can we do? With this connection what are you coming forward to share with us that will guide us because we're working together yeah you know we're working as much together as we are with our neighbor next door and and these beautiful people in front of us who have eyes looking back at us and hearts that we can feel you know they're here with us too you know so I don't know. It's just I'm throwing that out there for we're going to do that. Homework. I think it's good. It's good to understand, you know, what what is the call that you're feeling? What is the what is the reason? What are you learning, you know, in that moment? And and so that you because it'll just it'll 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 continue to expand. It'll continue to do. And, and as we said earlier, it's not just a one time thing. This is a daily thing. You can you have the opportunity every single day. You know, I would say every minute, but that might be a little excessive. But every single day, you have some opportunity to do something. I was just thinking I was watching a woman today. We all, we haven't had rain here in a long time. And the grass is dying. And the birds are hungry because the bugs aren't coming. Yeah. And so there was a woman out there, and she was spreading food all over the ground because she noticed that the birds are hungry, you know. 
And I did the service. I was her observing oh. and being kind. And she, you know, I don't want everyone to keep score, but in for this week, keep score of the opportunities. And hopefully there'll be so many. Yeah. You will be lost in your own giving. But just for this time, notice the opportunity as that comes to you and be thankful for the opportunity. Say, I'm yeah. thank you for this opportunity to serve right now. So may I, I say huh? May I say something? Change something or say something? Sure. Say something. Yeah, of course. Um, my English is not so good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to say I am in the States. I have uh, shared a lot uh, uh, in different uh, groups. I had my own groups. And um, I'm in the States that I think from... Um, what does it matter? Uh, how do I, do I explain this? Um, it does look like it doesn't matter to other people what I share. That's my feeling right now. Well, you mean in, when you're sharing with people outside of your, in your life? Nah, about spiritual things and... Well, it doesn't have to be spirit things. It can be just sharing a smile with someone or sharing a cup of coffee with someone or picking up some trash in your neighborhood or, you know. Yeah. That's what we mean by service too. It doesn't have to only be, it, it's not about only talking about spiritual stuff. It's about being that spiritual person, walking in the world and, and making it better for you. Yeah, but that's... Uh... I have done that too, but more at uh, online with people. Yeah. A lot of time. But um, I'm now in a moment that I think from now. Yeah. Ben je Nederlander of niet? Spreek je Nederlands? Are you where are you from, Helena? Nederland. Okay, so oh. you live in Den Haag. So. Yeah. Yeah, maar, Nederland. Maar, yeah, maar, Als je iets in dienst wil doen, het heeft, heeft niks te doen met de reactie van de andere. Maar het is meer dat je, je geeft van de, van de hart. En, en je, 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 je krijgt niet altijd een uh, goede reactie terug. Dat is, is niet de bedoeling. Maar je, je heeft van je hart. En alles komt vanuit je hart. En, 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 en de reactie van de andere is niet de meest belangrijk. Omdat je, je doet het niet dat je zal iets krijgen, maar wel dat je kan iets geven. En mm dat -hmm. is de bedoeling, en dat is de dat is de verschil tussen uh, ik doe iets of dat jij kan zeggen, oh ja, yeah, but bedankt voor dit, maar meestal dat gebeurt niet. Maar dat is niet de bedoeling. Je geeft niet, je geeft het niet dat je mag iets te terugkrijgen, maar je geeft het wel dat je je kan van je hart geven. En dat heeft dat heeft een impact. Het mm -hmm. maakt verschil in de in de in de wereld. It's, it, soms is het niet te zien in de in de in de in de nu, maar wel. Ik ben maar ik ben 100 zeker dat in de, in voor de toekomst het maakt een verschil. Mm. Waar woon jij? Waar woon jij? Gouda. Gouda. Oh, je moet mijn koffie drinken. Ik woon dichtbij. Ja, <laughs> yeah, echt. Je moet koffie. Ik ben echt uitgenodigd. Zeker. <laughs> Okay. Bij mij komen, zeker. I'm glad that you come by my. I, what I said to her, to her is that you don't give <laughs> because you want something back. You give because you're giving, and you might not know that it makes any kind of impact, but it will. It will. And then I said, she lives not far from me, so I said you have to come to me for coffee. <laughs> so, yeah, hundred percent. She she lives maybe twenty five minutes away. Oh my gosh! See, and I and Ilona, you reached out this morning, and you mm -hmm. said I'm sad, and it's not it's not something you've ever done before. You're reaching out. You made you shared on the Illumination Network that you really felt like you needed some support. Others responded. I responded and said I would like to FaceTime with you and meet in person. So we're mm. planning that tomorrow. And I said, please show up if you have a chance to be here today because I felt that this would be helpful to you. And I know. Attracted. 
And you can, you can hear my bad Dutch, right? My uh, Baltenlander uh, Netherlands. Yeah. My I know it. <laughs> huh? You, she just started our homework off with this brilliant example. And even just using you as the example when we started, that you post beautiful things. You know, it, sometimes it just takes one person to observe that, but you also have to observe the, the feeling that it gives you when you're posting it. You know, you post beautiful things and someone else may not even ever say, I'm feeling sad today, read what you posted. It's a simple thing. You didn't do it as an act of receiving anything other than to share something. And it was received by another. And that wave of gratitude comes back to you. So I love, you guys are 20 minutes apart. You can have coffee and you know, yeah, you and I'll come over. tomorrow. Yeah. <clears throat> I know. I know. I'm. I don't have anyone to that's spiritual close to me either. I'm alone all day long. Where are you? And I don't have. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. There are tons Sorry, of people. I, I have a person not, for you. <laughs> I do. I have a wonderful person for you in Phoenix. Do you really? Yeah, I, really I don't know anyone that's uh, spiritual here. My family is. She's always in the. Uh, she's on. She's on the uh, human colony. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Webinar every Saturday, and she lives in Phoenix. And her name is wow. Renee. From, no, she lives in Tucson. Sorry, but you could. Uh, it's she's not that two and a half hours away. No, but you could still meet each other. You could meet each other. It's, she, uh, uh, it's she quite, a, quite a hike. Huh? Yeah, but you could still. Quite a hype. She's lovely. Yeah. Anyway, but I know exactly what you mean. It gets lonely when you don't have. I mean, my my husband's awake, but he works all day. So what I mean, but he doesn't want to talk about this because he doesn't See, practice it. Oh well, we'll always talk to you. Many yes. Maybe that's something. <laughs> And those are the things. Take notice then this week. We've got a bit of homework. We've yeah. got some ideas. But also take notice, no, jot down. And that's how Karen and I wanted to open up next week as well is give us your feedback, your comments, your observations, what you might perceive as, you know, an obstacle before you now that's blocking your way. How can we help bridge that, create a network and, and a bridge? So we, we're really great creators, right? How can we create our own? our own um our own i don't want to solution <laughs> you know to what we don't want to be we want something different how can we do that together sorry just to wrap it up there karen i know we've no taken problem. a lot of your time yeah we're gonna um, we're gonna need because it's almost nine o'clock and i don't know wonderful i could probably yeah. sit here but I, I need to move around but alona i'll send you a message in illumination network and if you 100 percent, please i'd love to get together with you you can come over and drink coffee, and we can go to Scheveningen and walk on the uh, by the uh, on the strand and uh, something. There's always nice things to do. I will contact you. Okay, good. So, my heart. Yeah, you and I can zoom anytime. I'm really good on one-on-one -on -one zoom. Yes, yeah, she's. <laughs> uh. I'm a pro at it. <laughs> uh, you are so technically challenged. <laughs> you crack me up. It just only takes doing it a couple times and then you'll figure it out, you know? So why don't we end with a, a little um, yes. meditation or something? Do you want to do it or you want me to do it? or? You know what? I'm, they're familiar with my style. Let's hear it. I'd love for you. You are a guest. You've given of your time and it's been, it's, it's been, thank you. Mm -hmm. Allow me to thank everyone who's, who's taken to show up. And then Karen, thank you so much. So, yeah, this shirt is like one of those shirts that gets bigger as you wear it. I, so it's, awesome. like, I get it. it's like falling <laughs> off of me now. <laughs> it's, it's a Sunday. I have these pants that they also, they're like linen and they, you put them on and then within two hours they're falling down. You know, they get bigger as you wear this. Is this is, shirt is not linen, but it's of a similar, uh, <laughs> Similar material. Yeah. So, okay. What we're going to do is we're just going to um, do like a closing meditation. We're going to ohm three times. Beautiful. And uh, then we'll set an intention for this week. And then we'll close with ohm shanti, shanti, shanti. And that just means peace, peace, peace. So, okay. So just take a, a deep breath, comfortable seat.
and just allow your breathing to be just soft and regular. You can just match my tone of OM. Just take a breath in through your nose and just hold it and we'll let it out with a very perfect long stream of OM. OM. And another deep breath in, in through the nose. Om. One more time, breathing in through the nose. As we sit here in the after echo of the sound, just allow yourself to feel the joining of our vibrations and our intention in this week and in all the weeks to follow that we are in service to humanity. And that includes ourselves, but that we open our eyes and ask that the universe bring us the clear seeing of our brothers and sisters as we walk in the planet. Let us be mindful of our impact, the effect that we have as we take our steps so that we know that it's better not to throw the trash on the ground or to remember to recycle the plastic, to maybe choose not for plastic, maybe to buy reusable straws, to eat healthily for ourselves, to conserve our water, to share what we have with our fellow beings and to always be open to other people's needs that we can possibly meet. And as we have our commitment to service, we know the universe will bring us all the opportunities that we need to serve. And that we every time we look at another being, we know that that person is really just the divine staring back at us. And through that, we hope to find our own divinity and our own humanity. So we're excited for this week. We're excited for every moment and we're so very appreciative of everything and every opportunity and everything that we do have and all the blessings that we experience in every moment. Just take another deep breath in. I'm going to end with Om Shanti, 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 which is peace, peace, peace. And then every day we can commit ourselves to that peace, to sharing it, to being it. Deep breath in, in through the nose. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste, everyone. Mm -hmm. See you all next week. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Namaste. Thank Namaste. you.